Let's show appreciation once again for Mr. Anthony Subero, who focused on the introduction of practice leading, very profound uh, presentation. We'd like to thank him. And we'd like to acknowledge the attendance and presence of Mr. Anthony Sabga, the guest of honor, the third group CEO, and some Macau group of companies. And of course, uh, we thank him for being with us here today. Moving on now, and those of you who are following us on streaming platforms, you can also once again, send your questions and or comments to our pre presenters, and we will be able to feed them through uh, the podium at the appropriate time. Moving on now to focus on uh, the issue of enterprise risk management from a Caribbean perspective. And our facilitator is Ambassador Thomas. Ambassador Thomas was trained at the IMF Institute of the International Monetary Fund as a central banker in financial analyst and policy and has worked for the Bank of Jamaica in his early career. He has expert knowledge of the Jamaican and global economy. He's provided count consulting services to governments and the private sector, and he's had an extensive network of global connections available to execute upon projects. He's now a resident of Atlanta, Georgia, and a business consultant. His expertise is available to businesses where he can contribute to strategy and corporate development, effective operations management and project management to drive enterprise value creation and profits drawing on his multi-dimensional experiences and training and hands-on approach. Ambassador Thomas has served on the boards of several institutions, including the Urban Development Corporation, the National Investment Fund, the Jamaica International Financial Services Authority, the Micro Investment Development Agency, where he was chairman, and the Mental Health Association of Westchester in the US. He holds a bachelor's degree from the University of the West Indies and a master's in business administration MBA from Columbia University, New York. Ambassador Thomas is a member of the Governing Council of National Commercial Banks, Institutes of Learning and Development, the ILOD, and the Postgraduate Advisory Council from the University of the Commonwealth Caribbean and the Academic Review Committee of the Board of Directors of the Jamaica Stock Exchange, a member of the Advisory Committee of the Women's Business Center of Jackson State University. Ambassador Thomas has served as a member of the University Council and a past president of UE's Alumni Association, New York chapter. Please help me in welcoming Ambassador Ralph Thomas, Jamaica, to speak on enterprise risk management from a Caribbean perspective. Chairman. Member of Parliament, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Now, I'm delighted to be here in beautiful and vibrant Trinidad and Tobago to speak at this fourth Caribbean Risk Management Academy Conference, the premier forum for discussion of enterprise risk management in the Caribbean, at the invitation of President Ken Akshaw. And I thank you for the opportunity to address this distinguished audience this morning business leaders, public officials, and subject experts and interested parties. We're viewing it here and across the globe. And I must highly commend this morning the CRMA for their consistent efforts to increase awareness of ERM and provide technical subject expertise in the region, a deficiency which we have to continue to address. In framing the issues for discussion, I suggest that there are three convergent perspectives for consideration. That of government, industry and commerce, and then the individual, for whom ERM means quite different but interrelated things, and invariably revolve around two facets of threats and opportunities to be addressed. And of course, threats and opportunities define the external environment in which all stakeholders operate, ranging from local, regional, and global context. In response to these opportunities and threats, stakeholders must identify and address their own internal capabilities, characterized, of course, as strengths and weaknesses. We talk about that a lot. 
and develop appropriate strategies and business models. And of course, a business model has different components, nine components, which you can switch and change. And you have different versions now to respond to the new environment that we are talking about now. So a lot of work has to be done in that area. And of course, responded to initiatives and projects to seize opportunities and to mitigate risk or avoid risk, but also to leverage risks to generate superior returns when possible, depending on their risk appetite and expertise. For Caribbean enterprises, three areas stand out for managerial attention. Operational effectiveness and efficiency, deriving, of course, cost savings, bringing more to the bottom line, financial reporting reliability, Compliance with applicable laws and regulations, as described in the Committee of Sponsoring Organizations, COSO Framework for Enterprise Risk Management. And accompanying these five components of internal control that can reduce risk, of course, are the control environment, risk assessment, control activities, information, and we heard a lot about that, and communication and monitoring. The adoption of, of enterprise risk management by Caribbean firms to gain a comprehensive overview and to break down the silos that exist between accounting and reporting, finance, compliance, IT, and so on, and operational functions to add better oversight of strategic management, managers and executives is a necessary step in advancing their resilience and enhancing risk performance. So removing the silos that keep us speaking of risk in different ways. And to order to get a corporate overview of the entire platform of risk. In Jamaica, identity theft, fraud, use of ransomware, as we heard, and other cyber threats have impaired firm profits. And the banks in the region have incurred significant losses in their credit card portfolios, and also through the ATM networks and other means of fraud. ERM techniques can provide early warnings and initiate responses more quickly by ensuring that cross-functional collaborations are established, data analytics deepen, and by employing artificial intelligence and machine learning. And of course, this whole issue we've heard this morning about increased awareness throughout the organization. One of the new, the biggest risks now faced by our organizations is digital risk requiring agile approaches to transforming the organization to be resilient in the face of adversity as a strategic imperative. Caribbean firms must prioritize and invest in the implementation of digital strategies to go beyond resilience into the anti-fragile terrain where the enterprise benefits from asymmetries that produce superior results compared to competitors by transforming risks into profits. Indeed, we are familiar with the actuarial and risk management approaches used by insurance companies, for example, to underwrite a portfolio of risks based on mortality and expected returns on the portfolio. They do not avoid risk. They really try to control risk and find the appropriate level of risk that they can use to generate profits. However, insurance and banking acquisitions by companies like National Commercial Bank in Jamaica which operates in the region, and Sajikor. And deepening incursions into commercial banking have created new and complex enterprise risk management challenges for these highly profitable organizations. And they re require intensifying your digital strategies and enterprise-wide training in risk management. NCB, for example, has entered into a collaboration with the university to have software engineers trained for their hire. And so they're financing that and hiring those people to carry out their own digital strategy in an accelerated way. Banks also must manage portfolios of credit risk, market risk, and interest rate risk to earn profits where they lend, invest in securities or trade currencies, derivatives, or other instruments. The challenge is to do this profitably and consistently while maintaining adequacy of regulatory capital. And we know that the Basel Accord requires banks to increase their level of capital. And so these are challenges 
that these institutions face. Organizations may employ scenario planning, modeling and simulations, and stress testing to predict outcomes well in advance of actual situations, I add. Leading, of course, to more predictable outcomes, they must employ or train individuals with the necessary skill sets or employ consultants with the subject expertise. They don't have to be experts themselves, but need to understand how to manage the pool of experts to get the right strategic outcome. And I stress that risk is neither an enemy nor a friend, but a force to be reckoned with using enterprise risk management capabilities to identify, assess, monitor, mitigate, and transform risk over time. The key factors affecting economic stability and growth and industry and firm profitability in our region, and certainly firm, firm sustainability, emanate from the wider global environment and are often perceived as beyond our control. Expectations are that the global economy will slow and some countries face hyperinflation and possible stagflation, which is of course, you're going to recession and your inflation is high and monetary policy does not work because you can't make the necessary adjustments. So we're going into an elevated risk environment that must be managed carefully. I would not like to create a negative view of the threats coming in because if you imagine a weather airplane flying, it flies very safely in the center of a storm. And so that's the space we have to navigate to be able to operate quite safely during turbulent times. New disruptive firms have emerged that are driven by enabling digital technologies that have removed physical borders to trade and the transfer of value across the globe. They have removed the industry silos that provided barriers to entry, allowing technology companies, for example, to invade the regulatory, the regulated banking sector and even the food and distribution industries. So competition is extended beyond defined industries. Amazon's acquisition of Whole Foods supermarkets leverage their digital platform business model where multiple companies and individuals can also utilize their platforms to access wider global markets efficiently at lower cost. A technology company enters the food distribution industry using its capabilities and therefore gains a competitive advantage and makes the ordinary business models of supermarkets pretty much obsolete. So that's a danger we face. We note the emergence of fintechs discussed in one of today's panels, where technology providers have used their unique capabilities to provide solutions and customer value, bypassing the regulated frameworks and governments worldwide vainly scramble to regain full compliance and control. So there's a world outside of the regulated world that represents opportunities, but also represents threats to the management of economies. Anti-money laundering laws, know your customer regulations, and other regulations as we know them are rapidly becoming obsolete as transactions occur outside the regulated environment over new blockchain and digitally enabled platforms, resulting in beneficial ownership and transactions becoming increasingly opaque. You don't know who you're dealing with because you can operate in an invisible world. How do you regulate that? New modes of communication, such as the phenomenon of social media, allow the rapid dissemination of information or disinformation, fake news, and exacerbate the challenge to firms and individuals of managing reputations, reputation risk, which can quickly destroy confidence in a product or trust in an institution. That is impossible to quickly repair. The immediate financial impact can be observed in the fall in the stock price and market capitalization of firms were targeted. So a clear and present danger to recognize in risk management. The emergence of new classes of financial assets and using blockchain technology with its unique capability to authenticate every aspect of a transaction and thereby build trust between parties to trade and exchange value has enabled the emergence of 
cryptocurrencies and crypto assets that are trading in billions of dollars. And very soon, more regular transactions for international trade will go off into crypto asset payments. And so therefore, again, we are seeing quite a change in the role of the financial intermediaries. Now, these securities are no longer esoteric instruments and are now recognized by Wall Street as acceptable but high-risk assets that can be added to mutual funds and can be used in portfolio management. How will firms in the Caribbean incorporate those instruments into their portfolios and manage those risks? These are the challenges we're facing here in the Caribbean. The crypto asset class presents unique challenges for legislators, though, and regulators who need to catch up quickly and understand the risks presented. And in a worst case scenario, markets or industries collapse or cyber fraud and identity theft create economic shocks requiring massive infusions of taxpayers' money to solve the problem. It's always better to be proactive than reactive. To be competitive and avoid customer loss, firms must therefore seek to create value and convenience for their clients while managing these new risks arising. What therefore are the implications for the discipline of risk, enterprise risk management today? I stress creativity and innovation and digital technology driven responses. We must address the high level imperative to establish ERM governance and protocols and the need to create dashboards of risk, heat maps and other graphic displays supported by enabling technology, of course, that make it easier for executives to have an overview of the entire spectrum of risk facing the enterprise, be it public or private sector. The availability of ERM dashboards of risk characterized by the potential impact and likelihood of occurrence reminds us of an airline pilot sitting in the cockpit of an Airbus 320 who must not only understand the significance and color of the flashing lights and gauges in front of her, but take precise and immediate action to realign the aircraft and keep it on the right track or make a media call and land urgently if risks are elevated. Now the flight of an aircraft is supported by a host of specialists and experts on the ground and in the air. Captain doesn't have to do everything. He just has to understand. He or she only has to understand command the craft and what the dashboard tells them. So therefore, there are experts on the ground who have intimate knowledge and who can command the complex technology that seamlessly produces the outcome of on-time and safe arrival of the, plane, of the plane. So in guiding the enterprise strategically to achieve objectives, uh, this morning we heard about the business aspects of the risk not just technology, but the business aspects of the risk were key things that had to be addressed even before addressing other issues. So senior executives then, like the captain of the aircraft, must understand the meaning and significance of early, warning, early warnings and status displays on their dashboards, but need not be subject experts in the minutia of sourcing and linking data from multiple parts of the organization to provide the reporting. It is in this area that more needs to be done by Caribbean enterprises to enhance their risk culture and sensitize and train their workforce. I therefore highlight today the important role that must be played by ERM consultants and specialists who design and implement the ERM architecture of your enterprises and work with chief executives and strategic business units to establish the key performance indicators and metrics that must be monitored on a dashboard of risk, also on your balance scorecard, to ensure the enterprise proceeds smoothly towards attainment of its short and long-term objectives, and ultimately result in enhanced firm performance. Control environment, coverage, risk appetite, risk and data infrastructure, measurement and evaluation, Press test response elements unified into a cross-organizational culture 
are essential elements of a robust ERM framework. Now, regarding governance, the role of a chief risk officer that can report directly and independently to the board. And to the CEO also is an important differentiating factor in governance and crisis response. Because sometimes we don't like to hear the bad news and it has to be brought forward. Sometimes it's a good news. The different roles of compliance and enterprise risk management ought to be differentiated and explained. Things like auditing, and everybody has a different perspective, but to unify it, the firm performance, the issue ought to pivot, pivot on enterprise risk management, giving the oversight. Each has differentiated focus, and of course, deepened protocols for collaboration must be established. Now, in order to survive and thrive, enterprises must establish comprehensive ERM frameworks and governance to inform their strategic plans, support implementation and execution of strategy and monitoring, and maintain firm sustainability and performance, increasing revenue reduction in, in expenses, increased net income, greater earnings per share, increased stock price. These are, that's what we mean by performance. And the evidence suggests that astute ERM management drives firm performance as evidenced by all of those things I mentioned. Enterprise risk management must be built into the DNA of the enterprise and begins at the board level and the C-suite level where governance protocols and accountabilities are established. The corporate structure that reflects the chain of command must also recognize the critical urgencies relating to risk management and permit shortened response times. Arrangements or a rapid escalation of crises to the appropriate level for swift revolution. I do note that Caribbean enterprises, including universities, have so far responded quite well to COVID disruption by changing their business models and adapting to the virtual, to virtual work, contactless delivery and omnichannel distribution modes, adaptations that have speeded up organizational development. We have not seen massive organization failures and also profits have quickly rebounded in some companies. So it's not all doom and gloom. Some are doing quite well, despite the challenges. Now, I conclude, now more than ever, institutions like the CRMA are required to provide increased awareness, training, consulting, and support to both the public sector and the private sector in the field of enterprise risk management and strategy, enabling improved performance. Working together, let's make it happen. Thank you.